Distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, it is my deep pleasure to invite you all this evening to the Ismaili Center here in London as the president of the Ismaili Council for the United Kingdom. The Ismaili Center is a special building. Um, it's the first of its kind of uh, six Ismaili centers across the world. It was opened by the then Prime Minister, Margaret Thatcher, in 1985 and is reflective of the identity of the Ismaili Muslim community. It is a place for prayer, but also a place for dialogue and learning. And this building regularly hosts lectures, as well as talks, debates, exhibitions, recitals, concerts, cultural events, and such other programs, bringing together people from different communities to promote thought, knowledge sharing, and awareness across a wide array of topics, ranging from socio-economic matters to culture and from politics to religion. A brilliant author and photographer, Guillaume Bonn showcases East Africa by preserving the legacy of the past, but also depicting it in a new light where hopes and dreams prevail. A passionate activist for climate change, peacekeeping, and creativity, Guillaume Bon's vision and artwork resonates with the history, the traditions, and the practices of the Ismaili community. In fact, many of the Ismaili community living here in the UK trace their roots in the journey of their forefathers from the western coast of India to East Africa. And there is a beautiful water painting on the mezzanine floor here showing the Indian Ocean straddling the coastlines of India and Africa. Deo Forster was brought up by the ocean on the west coast of Africa. She lived in Nairobi mostly and Boston briefly and is now resident here in London. She has published a novel reading the ceiling, and some of her work has been published in literary magazines such as Kwani in Nairobi and Agni in Boston. Her current work in progress is a non-fiction book based on a month-long walk on the border between Gambia and the Senegal. The question I would like to leave you with as you ponder on the images in this amazing exhibition is this. How have we fulfilled our responsibility as custodians of our children's heritage? That is, in what condition do we want to leave our past in the present for them to take into the future? The exhibition is based on a book that's called Mosquito Coast Travels from Maputo to Mogadishu. How it started was, um, it's based really on the fact that I come from that part of the world. About 10 years ago, maybe a bit more, I started thinking, wow, I can't recognize this place, what's going on, you know? And, uh, and suddenly I thought, I need to work on that. How am I going to be able to recognize and, and, and feel connected to this place that I come from? Ultimately, I realized that what I wanted to do and capture was a smell the smell of my childhood. The exciting thing about having this in this center is that I think these connections between the work and the center itself and what the center represents related to the Ismaili community, which is a community that's basically spread all over the world, which doesn't have a country. But you guys are, you know, basically citizens of the world 
and I am that as well. Anyone visiting this exhibition would expect something that's actually unusual and different. When I first looked at the, the photographs, I saw an Africa that's happened, and I saw also an Africa that's actually emerging. It's not necessarily the most beautiful Africa, but it's Africa as it is, not as people might want to pretend it to be. Guillaume's inspiration for this exhibition was trying to relate the Africa that he knew and grew up in with the Africa that's emerging today. And what was interesting about what he decided to do was um, look at Maputo to Mogadishu, which is a bit of the coastline that has changed a lot over the years. What for you is special about the East African coast from Maputo to Mogadishu? Because Africa is a big continent. So why did you decide to do just this particular stretch? So going back to the disconnect that I had with, with, with my place being East Africa, and, but also traveling in Central and West, West Africa, I, I, again, as I was saying just earlier, I, I was thinking a lot, how can I do something about this and, and record, you know, record in some ways smells of my childhood, you know, smells that, I, that connect me to the place that I come from. And that smell was sort of going away, fading away. And so finally it kicked in, I thought, well, you know, the only way to do this in, in a meaningful way is to go at the beginning. And the beginning is at the coast. And, and because we come from East Africa, um, East African coast, you know, was the beginning in, into this journey. I didn't know where it was going to take me, but I thought, you know, with all the major influences that this part of the world has had over the years and centuries, I thought I needed to concentrate on the East African coastline. Well, in your range of, of, of photographs, you show both Africa as in um, bits that have been destroyed, and you also show a kind of modern emerging Africa. How did you go about deciding what is worth taking a photograph of? Um, I, think, I think it really, the setting was basically was directing, you know, the, the pictures in some ways. So, so if I would find myself in the center of Dar es Salaam, obviously you have, you know, all those modern buildings popping up, you know, everywhere you look. So it, it, it kind of, the settings were giving me the directions of, you know, where I should point my camera in some ways, you know. Mm -hmm. But obviously not, not every part of the coastline is like that. So it's pockets you know, of, of the changes that are happening, which in some ways, the, moder the modernity of those changes, which, which are fast now, have something to do with East Africa, yes, but, but they're not quite coming from there. They're coming again from outside of East Africa. How do you want people to react to your photographs? Well, it's interesting, as, as we were talking just earlier, um, you know, seeing pictures in a book is a very different experience than, than seeing the pictures, you know, printed the size that they are printed here today. It's like a rediscovery of the, of, of the journey itself in some ways, you know. So, so with the curation that, that happened here, uh, I rediscovered some of the pictures that for me were sort of you know, part of me, but, but that I'd forgotten almost, you know? And so, so what's fascinating is like, it's, it's, you know, you do the journey, you photograph it, it becomes a book, then you have an exhibition and it's like, you're going back into that again, but in a very different way. So can you tell us about one of your own photographs that has struck you now in a new way, in an emotional way, as well as a visual way? Yeah, so it's the main photograph that you can see from outside, which is the poster. And I was telling uh, Prince Rahim earlier that Rosamin um, and Amin, who, who decided to push for that for that picture, um, suddenly you know it came into a new light in in that very picture. And I'm not entirely sure if it happens in any other pictures. Actually, in that very picture, you have a crystallization of of the past, the present, and the future. And and you'll have to look at the picture, and and maybe you'll see and connect with what I'm saying or not. But but you know it's there. I just wonder if you can tell us from your perspective, what, how do you see, how do you place yourself in that? And what do you see the role of the photographer or the artist photographer as being in this age of endless imagery? Again, it goes back to what we were saying. The, the world is changing very, very fast. And I think photography is being reinvented right now. I think I look at it you know, the same way when photography was um, invented at the end of the 19th century. The, the, the place of painting at the time was very different. 
You know, we, we know of people, the way they lived, they dressed and interacted with each other because of the paintings that we still have to these days. You know, the Velasquez and, and others, you know, did incredible work. And, and those paintings gave us an idea of how people lived then. And then photography came and photography took over that. And so photography became the, 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 the new documentary of the time. And, and, and that's what happened for you know, most of the 20th century. Photography had that role. And now we've come to this role where photography has become this international language that everybody is using on a daily basis. I don't know how many billions of pictures are being taken every day. But, but the essence of photography is no longer what it was because everybody is documenting their lives. Um, you know, from taking a picture of what you eat to, you know, the sort of day-to-day -day little things. So my role into that has been diluted. It's, it's very difficult because, because photography now is being reinvented, but we're not, and again, this is just me talking. Uh, we don't know really what is the end game of photography um, at, at the very moment and, and what is going to document the rest of our lives, or maybe everybody is part of that documentation now. I'm not, I'm not entirely sure. But, but the, the power of photography is not the same anymore um, because everybody has that power now. Um, but I wouldn't, because of what I've just said, I wouldn't call myself a photographer anymore because it doesn't really mean what it meant for me. My journey this evening um, being at this launch has been to see the images blown up. And it's very different when you see them up close and you see them up uh, magnified so that you notice little details that weren't clear before. And so, yes, I've loved being here. There's a common thread with East Africa. There's a common thread with the involvement of the Ismaili community in Africa. And I think everything this project is about goes sort of hand in hand and there's a lot of crossover with the work that, you know, the Aga Khan Foundation does and what I was trying to explain with the work and what I was trying to capture.